best as I can. Chris, when I'm wrong, you jump in. Okay? How the CPU come about? All right, it was actually the board prior to the last four years of board. So it was before I got on this board that the thought of this come about. Correct? Mm -hmm. So as we come on the board, we found out that this was going on. None of us on the last board really knew about it until it come in front of us. Now, as we begin the process, there was a budget laid out in front of us. Projected revenues put out by the Postal Service. Those projected revenues were $160,000 and up that this thing would be bringing in a year, and it would be able to pay for itself. And not only pay for itself, it would be able to pay back the $25,000 that we were going to use to build out the area of the old fire barn and get this all set up. It was so much going to pay it back that we actually set the fund up as a loan. So as this goes on over the first year we have this, that fund looks like it's negative 25 because it owes back the other fund, but we get a letter from the state. You can't do that for so we have to in turn revamp how we do this. So right from the beginning on day one, this post office was supposed to be financially sound and pay back the startup costs. Well, lo and behold, the first year of revenues weren't quite $160,000. They were, hang on here a minute. They were closer to about $48,000, $50,000. The second year they were about seventy thousand dollars, and this year they look like they could be close. You got it. Yeah, forty-eight thousand the first year, seventy and eleven, and in two thousand twelve, eighty-two. And this year they look on track to be right around that eighty-two thousand dollars. So half of what they were projected to bring in. Well, in two thousand ten, we sent back a letter to the postal service and said, "Look, this thing's just not making it." It's a cost of twelve, fifteen thousand dollars a year, and we don't presume it changed. We need to raise that rate that you're paying us, and they were paying us ten percent of its revenue. So they sent us back a letter, and they said we no longer give postal units a one percentage number, ten percent. What we do now is you have stamps and you have weigh-ins, and we break that out into two. But based on your last few years' sales, you will get about 12%. 11.78% is what they agreed to give us. So that was brought back to our board. For our board to agree to that and to take that, we had to enter into a two-year contract with them. And we said, no way, that's crazy. So we did not enter the two-year contract, nor did we get the 11.8. We are still operating at the 10% today. So, based on the numbers that the postal unit is doing at the $82,000, let's just say it's $85,000, easy figuring, we bring in about $8,500 a year. That's our commission for sales. The overall cost of that postal unit is about $20,900. So, if you deduct $8,000, we're in the $12,000 to $14,000, depending on revenue. As revenue goes up, that number could come down. Everybody knows how that works. So what brought on this whole meeting tonight was we want to reposition the post office to increase the rate again. The other thing they said was you were not in business for two years. You don't know what it's going to do. Wait till it's in business for two years before resubmitting. So that's what brought on the big meeting in the Facebook postings and the whole nine yards of this is we're going to send them a resubmittal for a rate increase. Along with that, though, we are going to send a letter. And the letter will go in and tell them why we need the rate increase, all the different things. And the last line of the letter is, if we cannot find another location for this, if we cannot find a local business to take it, and there is no rate increase of any kind to us, we would like this letter to serve as our 120-day discontinued notice. Okay? 
So that has to be done. Now, folks, if they come back with the 12%, it has to come back to this board. They have to vote to take it or not take it. So it is not a finalized deal by sending out this letter, but the letter coincides with talking to the lady from the post office, Joanne Zwier. Zwier. And in talking to her, she made it very clear to me that she told us up front that this should never stand alone. It should not have been done this way. Okay? That she tried to make that clear and it wasn't. Now, according to her, as I asked, could our library take it over? And we'd let, let me get a glass of water here. You can't escape. I know, I'm going to run out the back door here. You have to come back. Well, I wish I had. I would feel better if I had <laughs> Okay, so anyway, in talking to her, she also made it very clear that the library cannot take it. They are a different unit of government, and for that to happen, we would have to close the doors. They would have to repetition pe and bid it in the whole process. The same goes along with it going to any other business in this town. We cannot give it to another business. Jeans, uh, Michelle's, any of them, Joyce at the hardware, nobody can take it without the doors first closing. So if that becomes an option, we still have to submit this 120 million dollars. <coughs> this has to be done. Now that lady was very clear, Cindy, and we will have a discussion with the lady at the post office in Nuevo versus her. She said absolutely no post office boxes up. These we were not set up. Private. This is a private company. Okay, so that's something totally different. Yeah. So she said they will not give us U.S. Postal Post Office box. That's not even an option for us. So those are the discussions that I've had with the lady right from the post office. She did not recommend this. And that was the last thing she said with me, is I knew it wouldn't work because it should never be alone. The whole idea of these things are they are open hours that the post office is not. That's why you put them alongside a convenience store like Michelle's would be perfect. They're open eight to 11 and you can do your postal stuff all those hours. It gives people more options. That was the whole design of them. And this is the only standalone one they have. There are no other standalones. All the other ones are with businesses. Yes, ma'am. Don Star. Wasn't it true though that no one in town wanted it? Not, not only was that true, it is still true today. That has not changed. And there's a letter in here about looking for other things. I've been to every business, folks. Every one. I've talked to them. They don't want it. I have one guy that finally gave me a maybe. Okay? That's all I got, a maybe. You're afraid want... of businesses that don't want yes. it, not, not the people that yeah. don't want No, no, not the people. The businesses will not take it over. We've tried. Again, the letter says... Why aren't you looking at other business? We looked twice. This isn't the first time we've looked. We've been trying. Okay? We're also still exploring the option of the campground. Okay? This could go alongside the campground and over there. We can have two people or one person doing two jobs, checking people in, campers in, and mailing a package. That's what it's supposed to do. That is an option we are exploring. That is not done and gone. I have a question. Yes, if you are exploring that option and yep. you don't have an answer yet, why is the 120-day uh, letter of discontinuance being sent at the same time until you have all the answers? That well, makes sense. one of the reasons I'm sending it along is per the conversation with this lady, and you guys can run out and blab this or do whatever you want with it. It may or may not help us. But it might give a little feed to whether or not they give us the approval. She said, throw it in there. It that's, won't work. That's Let's kind of like blackmail, it. though. Aren't you, isn't it true that you're trying to get a, Sally, a higher I'm just gonna, than what they are willing to pay? Sally, I'm going to speak honestly with you. As far as this goes, folks, if status quo remains and the cost of this thing is $14,000 a year, I, for one, will probably not vote on it come budget time. Okay, okay. so I'm just, question. I'm laying it right out front. I want to ask another question. Yep. What uh, other services, the general fund is for services to the community. Correct. What other services is this money going to 
provide to this community well, if the post office closes. One other thing in the letter, Sally, that went out is that this township rarely spends all of its budget money. And where will this money go? This township, for four out of the last five years, has been over budget. Okay? Now there's two ideas of under budget and over budget in people's mind. Our federal government's a prime example of this. Okay? I believe in being at budget or under budget means whatever you bring in is what you spend. That's your budget. But some people believe, as do our government, that if you have expenditures more than your income, the federal government will borrow the money and make it even. Or you can go to your savings, your fund balance. Bring it out, put it in your budget, and your budget is now balanced. Okay? I don't believe that's a balanced budget. I believe we overspent by thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000. And for the last four out of five years, we have been over. Our general fund has depleted. Okay? Last year, we were fortunate enough that revenue sharing with the state went up enough money that we were able to put a significant number back. But we are still not back to fund balance of one year's revenue. We're still not there yet, and we should be. Okay? Our board was very close prior to us taking over. We overspent and dropped the uh, fund balance by almost $130,000. It come down huge in the last four years. Well, so for all this talk that this township is so well off, yes, we have road millage money. We have fire department. We have um, library money, and it's all in there, but it can only be used for certain things. The general fund is the only thing that applies here, and that is not as fat as everybody seems to think it is. Okay, so where will this money go, Sally? It will go to make the bottom line balance. That's where the money will go back to. There is no other plan for this money or any other direction for this money. And until we get our budget, Put online, now I, I invite all of you to be here at the next meeting in January, which is the 28th, and it's in the morning. We will be presenting our first budget out of the new software that we bought two years ago. And I think we're gonna be able to show you where every dime of your money is, how it's being spent, where it's going, and track it so that we can tell you where we're at. But as of right now, it's a little difficult, so. Where that money will go, Sally, it will go back into the general fund. There is no plans of it to go anywhere else. Yes, sir. Morgan, and with uh, with the post office, can can you adjust the rates and charges for the for the services they provide? No, they, or do you have like a black bin? The post office sets those fees and those costs. That's that. All we can do is negotiate the percentage they send us, the commission. Let me give you an example. Yeah. <clears throat> I sent out a bunch of documents, and I was up at Big Rapids, so I went through. Uh, UPS, yeah, and uh, it was like 80, 85 bucks, <clears throat> and they, they, the, I didn't read the copies when I was there, so I got home, found out they left some, you know, sections out, so I had them uh, copied again, and then I uh, took them to the post office to mail them out, and it was like 12 bucks or something like that. It was, you know, the, the, I mean, I'm all for, you know, the free market system, believe me, but if there's a way to make money. We need to advertise these guys. Jim, if we can charge just you more, we will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but again, a, part of the U.S. Postal Service, I mean, folks, understand that whole service has problems. Yeah. Yeah, I, have, right, right. I, have, I have very, very good friends at UPS who seem to think they might not be around much. Yeah, no, but they right. have their struggles. But these guys are doing marvelous with the next budget. Yeah, and understand, this is nothing to do with the reflection of the employees that work at their post. They are exemplary. They do a hell of a job. The people this community love them. I support it very much, but those ladies in place the day we did it, I think it was the best choice we could have made as a community. Is there anything, is there any fun that you can access to advertise, you know, get out and use the post office and you can keep it here for, and could you extend that notice of, you know, discontinuance instead of 120, could you make it 365 days and give it a shot if it's increasing every year? We, we don't have the, 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 again, that letter, I firmly believe, and, and I think I can speak this very safely, that they're going to come back with the same percentage of increase. 
They're not going to send back a letter of no, nothing. I, I, I would highly doubt they offered us 12% before, and now they're going to say nothing. They do not want a single percentage unit anywhere. So they want to split the percentage, and they're going to give it in different measurements, and I've applied for that in the thing I filled out for the rate increase on what they wanted in their percentages. I believe they're going to send something back to us. So then this is coming up again, Jim. It will come back to the board, and during budget time is when the actual deciding factor of this is going to be done. If this board deems it to budget $12,000 to take care of that posting unit, it keeps going. The letter of discontinuance just goes away. And if we take the new percentage, it definitely goes away because they're going to want a contract out. So th this is nowhere near done. Like I said, the letter of discontinuance was addressed with the lady from the post office. I didn't put it in there. She said it would be a good idea, so I slid it in. So let's get this to her and see what kind of rate increase we can get. We've done everything they've asked for. Waited the two years, showed the cost increases, showed revenue expenditures are helping them. We did everything they asked for. <coughs> so, yes, sir. Morgan, uh, in public comment, <coughs> Mrs. Long kind of had mentioned some other options. Um, you know, that's a long time uh, postal employee and her husband's a long time retired postal employee. Uh, maybe you seek their advice uh, on what some of those other options may be that can help uh, that postal unit or, or the alternative. We are open to any options that can help keep this thing going. So, so it's either subsidized by taxpayer dollars or we have to triple the revenue coming into the place. Exactly. Single people. That are yep. That. Right now, the revenue strikes me as a bit of a long shot. Yes. Yeah. Let's hope for a good rate increase. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Why wouldn't it be a good idea to try to bring the vote on the millage back and get out this time and do some publicizing, make some phone calls, put some ad space, put some well, signs out, let people know. That, that yeah. is that is the other thing of this that we did not really discuss here tonight, folks. <laughs> It was put on the ballot. It was presented to the people of this township. And it all it was put out there. Now I, I have said all along, I don't believe it was necessarily put on that ballot. Do you want it? Yes or no. It was put on there, do you want to pay a little extra to keep it? And it was very adamantly voted no. Okay? A lot of these other services that are all talked about in here, such as the library, the road millage, the um, but still on the fire department. Understand the people of this community have voted in millages that coincide with those services. So not only they said they want a library, they said we'll pay extra for a library. Yes, we want things done with our roads, and now we do we want things done with our roads, we'll pay extra to do our roads. Yes, we want a fire department. Now all along we've special assessed for the service, but the people said we want a new fire barn, and they voted it in to build it. So those things were voted in and done. People say they want them. People very happily voted no. Okay, so that is an option to come back and put this on the ballot again. The people can petition, get a committee together, get it going, get a push for that. You know, the last time nobody campaigned. There wasn't one sign put out. Nobody went out and campaigned for this post. Not one person. <coughs> so, yes, sir. If you can't increase your cost or your income, some options to decrease your cost. So by cutting back the three days a week or whatever, you could cut your cost if, dramatically. If you believe that the cutback, the people will still get there on the three days a week. <coughs> the, the, the closing yeah. date, Jim, usually it goes hand in hand. The more you're open, the more you do. The less you're open, the less you do. So. Morgan, another thing is yes, that so. we don't observe the same exact holidays that the post office does. That's an option, too, because you're yep. paying wages to us when the, the post office is closed. Yeah, but that's good, Sally. That's According to the lady from the postal unit, those are the important days for you to be open, are the days that the post office is closed. Times the post office is closed, that's when this thing is supposed to be open. 
That's what that lady from the post office said. That's what makes these but things people work. think we're closed because the post office is closed, so our, our income is not, the people aren't coming in on those days as right. much. We need yeah, to get more closed. <coughs> I have a comment, if I may. Yes. Um, I'm not sure if you have Although I am not a Crumpton Township resident, and that's why maybe in the past I've been very quiet, <coughs> um, there was a good question posed, um, and that was the amount of traffic, actual traffic counts. These are not necessarily people coming in to purchase stamps or to ship a package. It's how many times person walk through our door to use our services. Right. And I came up with a fairly accurate average of between 700 and 750 people per month walk in our post office. And if you want to look at it in terms of a service to the community, I think that's an important number. That's all I have to Sue, I also think that number is going to be important because I will go back to some of the business owners with that number. Mm -hmm. Because every one of them could buy a can of pop and a candy bar and everything else in that business. So those numbers could be very important. Can I say something? Yes. We have even weighed fish in the post office. <laughs>